Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So how are we all doing? I'm doing really well, just struggling to find the time to vlog at the moment. It's been such a hectic couple of weeks. Had my gorgeous granddaughter for the weekend, which was just delightful. We had a lovely, lovely weekend. So haven't had much time to sew. Um, been busy with work, etc. And yeah, it's been really nice. But anyway, I thought I would come on today to do a pattern review for you because I've not done one for ages and I have been planning this one for quite some time to talk to you about because I love it. And I know that you're always really excited to hear about patterns that you are not that sort of well known or popular and see them made up. So I thought you might be interested in this one. So today I am going to talk to you about La Blouse by Atelier Brunette. So if you didn't know, well, you do know that about Atelier Brunette, I'm sure you know that they do amazing fabrics, beautiful, high quality fabrics in gorgeous tones and they do matching zips and matching buttons that all blend in beautifully. But they also do patterns as well. They've recently developed their own pattern range and I've made a couple of their patterns now, but this one is a firm favourite, so much so that I made it twice already and there will be more. So I thought I would chat to you about La Blouse. So this pattern, let me tell you the details first before we go into the garments that I have made. This blouse comes in PDF and paper format and you can get it in the UK. So, you know, if you don't want to buy direct from Atelier Brunette in France, there are lots of places in the UK that sell it. I think Fabric Godmother do, I think So Me Sunshine do, but as I say, you can buy it in PDF format as well. It comes in AO if you get the PDF format so that you can obviously send it off for AO printing if you don't want to stick pages and pages together. But it also comes in French and English, which I think is really important because I know a lot of people are put off buying European patterns that don't come with English instructions. But I'm pleased to tell you that this blouse does. So it costs eight euros 33 for the pdf version which is probably about seven pound ish something like that or for the pattern itself the, the paper pattern is 16 euros which is probably about 15 pounds i bought the pdf version because i can't wait for paper patterns to come and <laughs> i like to be able to print them off and get them made up straight away so i loved the look of this blouse it is a well, it's described as an officer collar. I don't know what an officer collar is, but that's what this is. Apparently, it's just like a little, um, you know, a little rounded edge collar band. That's essentially all you've got. And it has a front button placket, which is fully functional. A lined back yoke. I will put some better pictures in so you can see a little bit later on. And it has these huge back wing sleeves with a curved lower hem that has side splits and absolutely tons and tons of gathers. Now, I'm, you're probably all going, oh no, groan, groan. We don't like doing gathers. I don't like doing gathers, I'm going to be honest with you. But I have... I've got a gathering foot, which to be honest, I didn't use for this. And the reason I didn't use it for this pattern is because I mean it when I say there are tons of gathers. And what I don't like about gathering is when you are trying to gather fabric into a yoke like this, and you have to gather your long piece of fabric into your smaller yoke, and you have to make sure all the gathering is really even and spaced out so it looks right. You don't have to worry about that with this because you because it's so voluminous, you gather the fabric up to within an inch of its life to as far down as it will go and it fits the yoke because that's how much gathering there is so it's actually really easy so I didn't mind doing the gathering for this at all obviously because I made it again <laughs> and yeah it's it's brilliant and I love the voluminous of this top it is absolutely ginormous it's gorgeous. It's so floaty and yeah, drapey. It's just beautiful. It's designed for lightweight to medium weight 
woven drapey fabrics that's very important that you choose a drapey fabric so you need to pick something like viscose viscose twills viscose linens which are within the recommendations for this particular design and not go for things like cotton lawns anything with more structure heavier weight linens i would avoid as well but the fabric choice that i used is a viscose crepe for this one and i think i used yeah viscose crepe for the second one which i'll show you shortly as well and it works absolutely beautifully for this pattern size wise it comes in sizes extra small to extra large now we know the european patterns are not renowned for being fully inclusive however this particular design i would say you know because of the voluminous of the design and the amount of ease that's in it as well because it is designed to be quite oversized and voluminous i think you know if you are outside these size ranges towards the the upper end you could get away with it the extra so extra small to extra large sizing equates to a european size of a 34 to 44 I sh i'm sure you american people are thinking that means nothing to us <laughs> so it does give you the finished measurements but Again, I think this is where some of the European designers fall down. They don't give you the finished measurements that they give you the garment, the, the body measurements for. So it gives you the body measurements per size in centimetres, but not in inches. And I like to work in inches, so I have to convert them. But when it comes to the finished measurements, it gives you the measurements of the shoulder depth, the sleeve length, the garment length and the chest width. So with the chest width, you have to double it because it's just one way across, which is just bizarre. But anyway, I've worked it out for you. You'll be pleased to know. So <laughs> the finished bush, bust measurement is a 44 inch for the extra small up to a 50, yeah, 50 inch for the extra large. So again, it's not fully inclusive, but my bust measurement I mean if I stand up and I'll show you my bust measurement currently is a 39 inch I made the extra large and it is you know look it's 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 so so much ease <laughs> it's just amazing it really is there is lots and lots of ease in this top so You've got gather. You can't see it so well on this particular version because it's black. I know it doesn't come up great, does it, on film? But you've got lots of gathering into the yoke here and here. And then the yoke, the yoke itself, as I say, is double faced. And you've got tons of gathering into the yoke at the back. And then what you do is the sleeve, you don't have like a normal sleeve head. So when you have done the gathered front to the yoke and the gathered back to the yoke and you've burritoed it you lay it out flat to attach your sleeves and your sleeves are actually a big rectangle they're not a normal sleeve shape and you put some gathering over the the sort of middle portion of the rectangular piece of sleeve to fit into the top here and then you just attach it to where the notches are so it's really important that you do transfer all your notches to your fabric when to your fabric you will need those notches to be able to line up where your sleeves finish and the hem starts if that makes sense so instructions were brilliant it is an easy pattern to make despite all the gathering it, it's easy it really is the hardest thing i think about putting this together is working with the fabric you, that you, you that you choose to work with you could use you know silks and satins for this but the, boy they would be difficult to handle i found working with this much drape and the amount of gathers etc a little bit tricky at times but from an instruction perspective it's very straightforward and it comes together really well you also have a little cuff that all the gathering at the bottom of the sleeve goes into a little cuff and they are designed to be sort of below the elbow but not come down to your wrist and yeah it's a fabulous pattern now on the pattern you can put the buttons right up to the top but I don't like the I don't like this if I'm honest I find it too 
claustrophobic and I don't like to have a button up top right up to my, the top of my neck and I do feel that this is a little bit tight if I'd have put a button here so I decided to leave it open like this at the top and I actually quite like how that looks the only problem with that is it does tend to slip back off my shoulders and I think that's because of the amount of fabric that's in this speaking of amount of fabric you do need a fair a fair whack of fabric to make this top and that's because of the amount of volume and gathering that there is to do so it recommends 2.7 meters and I would say that I used practically most of that I didn't lengthen this pattern at all I used my body measurements that I know the length of my torso etc and the sleeves my arm length etc and I measured the pattern pieces to see where it would come to and I was really happy with the length that it was so I didn't make any adjustments at all I just made the straight size large and I'm really happy with that I don't think I would go down a size with this top and the reason for that is because the whole point of it is to show off the drama of the sleeves and the voluminous etc so you need you need that ease in the pattern but I'll stand up and I will show you how it looks so, as I say, I used a viscose crepe for this particular blouse from Rainbow Fabrics. And you can see where it comes to me. And then you've got these sort of like curved hem. And the sleeves go out into like a bat wing style, which is just beautiful. Hopefully you can see the yoke at the back. And you've got all this gathering, lots of gathering at the back into the yoke. And most of the time I will wear this sort of tucked in, ooh, tucked into jeans like so. And yeah, I really like it because of the drape of the fabric and the amount of volume that you've got, even though when I straighten out my arms fully, the sleeve comes to just below my elbow. Obviously, because it billows, it billows down towards my wrist. And yeah, I really like it. If I come closer, you can see the buttons that I used are just some very plain black buttons that I picked up from my local boys. Hopefully, you can see the gathering there into the shoulder. And yeah. I absolutely love it. So I'm going to get changed into my second version and then I can talk you through that one. So quick change and here is my second La Blouse by Atelier Brunette. And this fabric again is a gorgeous viscose crepe that I had in my stash that I originally got from Rainbow Fabrics in this gorgeous pink and red floral design and I felt that making a spring version would be perfect to wear with white shorts or white cut off denim jeans I think it would just look gorgeous as a spring outfit so that's why I made this version you can see on this version the gathering in much better detail and just how much gathering there is into the yoke at the top of the shoulder and hopefully if I stand up a little bit you can see the gathering that comes into the arm top of the arm here if that makes sense and also the yoke at the back I again you know it is just such a beautiful beautiful blouse and um, you can see this one is quite as I say because you've got the side splits that it is quite sort of short but um you've got so much fabric I mean you could always sew up the side splits again I, I like quite like this tucked in I think it looks really really nice tucked in but I absolutely absolutely love this pattern it is such an easy pattern to put together but has such a dramatic effect and yeah I really really like it this definitely will not be my last it's obviously very fabric hungry that's the only issue but you know I do have some you know sometimes you get well I do I have some pieces of fabric in my stash 
that are, I've got probably about three metres, but I, then I find that there's such a bold design that I wouldn't want that particular design in, you know, a full head-to-toe garment, if that makes sense, because it probably would just be a little bit too much. Well, those fabrics, I think, would be perfect for this because, you know, I'm still making most of the, the amount of fabric that I've got, but can make it into a blouse that I won't feel like I'm standing out too much, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think I will be making many more of this blouse because I just think it's super flattering on my shape. And yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. I can highly, highly recommend it. So I also used on this pattern, I used some Pigeon Wishes buttons that I had in my stash in this pink and red. And I think they go absolutely perfectly with this shirt and the only issue I had with it if you can tell this is actually a directional fabric um the stems of the flowers obviously are in the right orientation on the front they are not on the back I don't know if you can really tell probably if I open out the gathers a little bit you can maybe just tell that I got the back piece upside down but you wouldn't have known that if I hadn't have pointed it out. So, you know, it's just one of those things that I didn't really, I didn't realise I'd got the back piece upside down until I'd cut it out, which, you know, it is what it is. I can't change it, but I don't have to look at my back. And if anybody is that close inspecting the orientation of my fabric, they're too close. Anyway, I am going to leave it there, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Have you made this blouse or have you made any other of Atelier Brunette's patterns? I would really, really be keen to hear from you and what your thoughts are. Um, yeah, let me know and I will be back with you really soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. <music>